So yesterday we of course got our first Nintendo Direct in over 500 days and anticipation and hype was very high for this event. Me personally, I liked the event. I didn't love it, I didn't think it was the best Nintendo Direct ever or anything like that, but I thought it was a very solid show. Make sure you guys go check out my thoughts on the Nintendo Direct in yesterday's video. But the one thing I took away from this was that there's a lot of exclusive games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the first half of 2021, especially when you look at the other systems. PlayStation 5 only has two exclusive games right now with dated release dates one being Returnal which I don't know I don't think that's a $70 game in my opinion which is something we'll talk about later on in this video and of course Ratchet and Clank which does look absolutely amazing over on the Xbox Series X we have Flight Simulator coming this summer oh, okay that's that's kind of neat but beyond that of course there's not much going on but one of the big announcements was of course Skyward Sword HD coming to the Nintendo Switch and since that announcement of the game and a look at the game with the preview of the game and what they've done with the game some people are saying you know what this game isn't worth sixty dollars nintendo is overcharging with this game and i'm not happy about it so that's what i want to talk about in today's video the skyward sword hd drama that is happening is this really a sixty dollar game we're gonna kind of come to some sort of conclusion with this by the end of the video what's going on guys i'm rgt85 if this is your first time on the channel welcome be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video and shout outs to you guys we hit 375,000 subscribers last night that's absolutely incredible without any further ado let's talk about skyward sword hd let's talk about how nintendo does business in general and try to figure out if this is actually a 60 dollars game or not or if it's overpriced now before we get into the actual debate and the pros and cons of the situation we have to talk about something that's very important especially to me with this situation and that is my experience with skyward sword on the nintendo wii now when it comes to mainline zelda games i've played and beaten just about all of them i absolutely love the legend of zelda franchise but there is one game that's always eluded me and guess what that was skyward sword on the nintendo wii now i picked up this game on day one and i played it and i was like uh, uh, i don't know I don't know there was a lot of things i did like about the game i like the art style of the game i thought it looked very nice with the sort of pastel colors going on but there was something that was bothering me and that was of course the mandatory motion controls now to say motion controls didn't work on the wii would be an overstatement because there was lots of motion control experiences on the system that i really enjoyed games like of course the house of the dead and all the light gun shooters that we got on the system and the wii mode itself was actually very versatile you didn't have to use it as motion controls for a lot of things you can make it go sideways or use a pro controller that was an attachment for your nintendo wii however when it came to skyward sword you had to use mandatory motion controls at first i didn't really hate it but as time went on i just sort of disliked it because of the main fact that when i play a legend of zelda game this isn't a game i play for 30 minutes to an hour or something like that i like to get really invested in it and play it for you know four plus hours per session so to have to constantly use motion controls in this game was definitely Definitely a turnoff for me and I didn't like having to do it all the time because it just sort of took me out of the experience I know it was supposed to ingrain us in this Legend of Zelda universe but for me it did the complete opposite of course, you also have to factor in that The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword came out six years after the Wii launched, and the Wii was not an HD console to begin with. Now, you could look sort of past that, you could hook up your component cables and things of that nature, but still, the game was definitely held back in terms of graphics when it came to games that were currently on the market. Of course, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox 360 were rolling along. We started learning about things like the PlayStation 4 coming out as well. So the Skyward Sword game definitely looked very dated on on the Nintendo Wii and it was definitely showing the cracks and crevices of the Nintendo Wii hardware as yes being underpowered so I never finished Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Wii so this was a game that I wanted to get a port this is a game that I wanted to come to the Nintendo Switch and Mr. Anuma came out yesterday and he, he was like yeah I'm gonna talk about Breath of the Wild 2 oh psych psych bitches I'm not talking about Breath of the Wild 2 at all I'm talking about Skyward Sword HD so for me personally this was a high point of the presentation of course, one of the main things with Skyward Sword HD is the fact that, hey, it's going to be in HD, meaning that we're getting HD visuals in this game. Now, of course, they still pretty much look like the Wii version of the game, just with better textures, better clarity, and better colors. The frame rate has also been improved to 60 frames per second as well. So once again, that's another win in my opinion with this game. But the most important thing, especially to me, because I mean, this is my video after all, is the fact that they have figured out a way to make the controls be 
be either motion controlled or a more traditional control method. You can use the second analog stick to basically control your sword in this game. By slashing up, you would hit up on it to slash down, you hit down, left and right respectively on the stick as well, will control your sword. So that to me is a huge win because it's a much more traditional control scheme. I don't have to waggle my arms around and do all sorts of crazy stuff in order to play the game. I could simply play the game on the couch with a pro controller and enjoy the experience. Or if you have a Nintendo Switch Lite, you can also enjoy the experience as well. But then of course pre-orders went up for Skyward Sword HD on the Nintendo Switch and we quickly learned that this was going to be a $60 game, which to me wasn't a big surprise, but for a lot of people they were a bit upset by this. This is overpriced. This should be a $40 game or a $20 game. It's a Wii port. Why would they charge full price for this game if they're not adding in anything, if they're just fixing up the visuals and of course improving the controls of the game? And I could sort of understand that, but there are some things we need to take away from this situation to show why it is currently sitting at a $60 game. The first thing we have to talk about is the fact that although the Nintendo Wii was a very successful system, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword sold under 4 million copies on it, which, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, 4 million copies is a lot, no matter the platform. But when you look at games selling on the Nintendo Switch, that's nothing. Like, that's on the low end of exclusives when it comes to the Nintendo Switch because games are selling so well on it. Let's take a look at a game like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch, a game that I did not feel was a $60 game on the Nintendo Switch. I did buy it, but that was just to simply review the game. If I was just a casual gamer, I would not have bought this game because really it wasn't that great of a game when it came out. It was good. It was solid, but I had already played games like that on my 3DS. Why am I buying this Wii U to experience a new game that's pretty much in the same sort of style, just with slightly better visuals? Now, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, I felt was a $40 game, but obviously a lot of people didn't feel that way because that game sold nearly 10 million copies thus far. Now, when you look at what Microsoft is doing right now, they're doing some very impressive things with their backwards compatibility. They're adding in better visuals, better frame rate, all at no additional charge with these things. So I think that's a very impressive thing. And it's something that a lot of people are looking at. Well, why isn't Nintendo doing something like this with their catalog of games? And I think that's a valuable argument. That's something that you can bring up and even considering that the PlayStation 5 is doing similar things with PlayStation 4 games. However, there are some differences with Skyward Sword HD because Skyward Sword was not an HD game. Now, yes, some of the games that released on the original Xbox were not HD games, but some of them were. The original Xbox did support HD visuals, so to take those games and upscale them to look and run better on the Xbox Series X is a lot easier than taking a game that is not HD and making it HD. Sure, you could sort of brute force it with things like emulators. Of course, there's the Dolphin emulator that could do a lot of impressive things, but from a console technology sort of standpoint and the fact that Nintendo has never done anything like this before, it would be very sort of taxing for Nintendo to go ahead and do something like this. But the thing is, do we even know if Skyward Sword HD is just a one-to-one -one port of Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Wii? We do know that, like I said, there's going to be improved visuals in terms of HD visuals. There's improved frame rate as well, and of course, a new control scheme. But this game is coming out in July of this year, and there's a lot of time between now and July. When you look at what Nintendo did with Super Mario 3D World by adding in Bowser's Fury, Bowser's Fury really sort of changed up the entire game, in my opinion. Bowser's Fury was definitely a very impressive thing that sort of changed up the Super Mario 3D World formula and was added into this game. It really gave this game additional value. Even if you played it to death on the Wii U like I did, I thought Bowser's Fury was a great addition to the game and really sort of extended the life of this game and it makes you want to go back and visit these mechanics and visit this huge open world area. Could Skyward Sword have additional content added into it as well? That was something that wasn't discussed, so you can't really sit here and say well it's definitely going to have it but in the same breath you can't write it off and say that well it's not going to have it there's a lot of time between now and the release of this game and to think that nintendo was only going to show this game one time and then just be sort of done with it until the month of july i think would be undervaluing nintendo especially with how they've been doing things lately with games that are coming over from other platforms to the nintendo switch i would not be surprised if there is additional content in this game maybe an additional dungeon, maybe additional characters. We don't really know that this is going to be a one-to-one -one port. So I think if it's not a one-to-one -one port, once again, you are once again increasing the value of this game tremendously, potentially, even for people who were in love with Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Wii. 
But the main thing for me when it comes to Skyward Sword HD on the Nintendo Switch is value. And value is something that is subjective, that will change from person to person. Like I alluded to in the intro of this video, when I look at a game like Returnal, I do not see a $70 game. If this was a $40, $50 game, I would pick it up on day one. But $70 just doesn't seem like it's going to be worth it. Now on the flip side, a game like Ratchet & Clank, I will gladly pay $70 for, because that game definitely looks like a $70 game to me. There's a reason I didn't buy Godfall for my PlayStation 5 when it came out, because Godfall was a $70 game, and it just didn't look like a $70 game to me. Miitopia, which was announced yesterday for the Nintendo Switch during the Nintendo Direct, of course released on the 3DS and I believe was a $35 game. Now they're adding in lots of additional stuff, but Miitopia on the Nintendo Switch is a $50 game, and you know what? I'm not gonna buy it. It's not worth $50 to me. Much like Sushi Strikers on the Nintendo Switch was not worth $50 to me. The main thing that we have to take away from this is that if a game does not look like a game you wanna drop $60 or $50 or even $70 on, just don't buy it. It's not the end of the world. You can always trade in games at your local GameStop or sell games to a friend or trade games with a friend if you want to play this game and they happen to have this game. You can rent games from Gamefly. Yes, Gamefly still exists. I did a sponsor spot for them a couple months ago and you could get a bunch of games at your house and play these games and not have to worry about the $60 price tag to me I have no problem paying $60 for Skyward Sword HD because I want to play this game again and most importantly I want to finish it the things like the HD visuals and of course the improved controls are very attractive to me and of course, there is the chance that there's going to be additional content in this game as well. But if you're not a fan of this game being $60, I completely understand that. That's the beauty of video games. Everything is subjective. And if people don't buy the game, then of course the price of the game will eventually come down. Look at Sushi Strikers. You can get that game for like five bucks on clearance at Walmart nowadays. So really, that's the main thing we have to take away from this. Value is extremely subjective. I bought this hat for $30. There are people that wouldn't pay a dollar for this hat because they're not a fan of the New York Knicks, but I am a fan of the New York Knicks. So to me, this hat was worth $30. So I don't know. You know, to me, I will be buying Skyward Sword on day one. I might even pick up those Joy-Cons and just leave them in the box because I like the way they look. But if Skyward Sword HD isn't worth $60 to you, that's okay. But do understand that people value things differently. And that is the reason why this game is going to be $60. And spoiler alert, it's going to outsell the original, probably by at least twice as much. So at the end of the day, Nintendo really has no incentive to make these games cheaper if people keep buying them. And I guess I'm part of the problem. Problem, so I apologize in advance but those are my thoughts on the Skyward Sword HD drama and if the game is worth $60 or not now, like I said if you don't think the game is worth $60 I completely agree with you because it's subjective to you but in the same breath understand why this game is worth $60 to some people who just want to experience this game in a more traditional way and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications once again shout outs for 375,000 subscribers it's absolutely incredible. You guys are awesome. The Knicks sucked last night, so we're not going to talk about the Knicks. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.